Hey guys, so today is you and I are going to talk about becoming obsolete. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how do you learn computer programming fast enough for, for your knowledge to not become obsolete? Well, uh, it's not that difficult. People think that it changes all the time, uh, but it doesn't. Like the the basic syntax, for example, of most programming languages are still following the same dialects as we have for years and years and years. Uh, most of the tooling, ha like a lot of the tooling has updated, but the same principles about, say, network uh, networking, uh, like how the web works, um, the different protocols, different file formats, like all of this sort of stuff sort of is the same and the same concepts like web servers and so forth. They're basically, uh, they're, there are many things that are updating and changing but it's not usually the whole thing. It's usually small pieces, small parts of something and when you get to a certain skill level, when your foundation of uh, knowledge is good enough, it's it's you can basically you can infer how something works before you even read about it so as an example like to take a trivial example now uh, if you know how to program in say Java well then making the leap to say C sharp is not that great and vice versa of course because the dialects are very similar the libraries are a little bit different the working environment is a little bit different but it's not so different that you basically have to go back to school for it and then like learn the whole thing over again that's not really necessary because one, the, the toughest part to learn uh, when it comes to learning is usually to learn something from the f from nothing when you don't know anything that's the thing that's usually very difficult for people especially when they're new with software you sort of start to realize that when you're going through an education you're learning like a tiny sliver of this gigantic ecosystem of like I mean just as an example if you go up take a programming boot camp or a go to university you might not even get exposed to say the terminal and the terminal and using like uh, CLI or things like that that's whole that's like a whole gigantic uh, part of being effective in uh, operations or things like that it doesn't necessarily have to be there that way but like that that's like an entirely unexplored area for you and you get the sensation that oh shit I know so little and there's so much and there are so many things that you need to know in order to know other stuff and that is true. That is, like, it's um, it's basically a network. Like you can pick any arbitrary point to get into IT, but then you realize that there are all these connections and other things that are still associated with whatever you want to do, and you have to know those things in order to be able to do the thing that you want to do. So it requires a lot of learning to learn all those things to a really proficient level. But once you have then your perspective will start changing and you will start to basically know how a tool works in essence or how to consume it before you even use it. You've reached that point where it's not that difficult to keep up anymore because usually all the tools are sort of doing the same sort of things or some are doing something in a slightly different way etc etc you can make basically make it the analogy to if learning how to ride a bicycle is going to be very tough for someone when they first try it out once they've learned how to ride a bicycle then maybe the next thing is how to le learn how to ride say a car well, the first car you're going to start learn how to learning how to drive. Uh, well, you still sort of know some stuff from when you learned how to ride a bicycle. You know sort of how to behave on the road. You know how not to you know run people over, and you shouldn't go up on the sidewalk, things like that. And now there's more to learn because the car is a very is a different sort of machine, right? But once you learn that, well, once you learn how to drive one car, you know how to drive. A slightly different car. It might not be as, street, as straightforward as your first car, but it's still possible. And then if you ride a lot of different cars, if you start becoming a little bit of a car enthusiast and you drive tons and tons of different vehicles, well, then basically you're going to get a comfort level that is at a level where you can basically jump in and drive almost any vehicle almost like an expert. Same thing with a moped. Like if you know how to drive a moped, uh, depending on the time, if it's not a Vespa or something like you're talking like, or say a motocross um, uh, or something like that, uh, then you're most likely very effective at 
driving a motorcycle for example because the difference is there but it's not so great that you feel like you don't really know what you're doing any longer that's the point that usually takes a lot of time for people to um, to master but for software it's not really that case there there is a it sounds weird guys and it's like it's there are always things that are going to change and there is no limit to all the things that you could be learning, but there is a such a thing as a sweet bound, like a sweet spot of knowing things, where you get to the outer bounds of what is completely new. You've never seen anything like it within IT. And when you get to that point, even though there's a million other things as well, they're not completely new to you. They're sort of old hat. They're just remakes or reinventions of something you already know, which means that learning them will take a fraction of the time. I usually tell people, uh, which was pretty cool, uh, this was when I took a course, I took an online course uh, for Harvard or something like that way back when, and uh, the whole course was in C. So we learned C programming. And, and on the finals for our final project, we were supposed to work with PHP. So we had months to learn how to work with C. And the total time they gave us to learn uh, PHP was one short link to the AMP stack, X AMP stacks, the, the different ways of just setting up a PHP, basic PHP project locally, and like a five second slide, almost five, it wasn't more than a few, say a minute or two, of uh, syntax differences uh, in PHP. Now I'm not a PHP. I, like at the time we weren't PHP developers, but the syntax was so familiar that I could pick up PHP, the basics at the very least, and build a project and deliver it on time and do all these things because I had already learned how to use C. It's the same thing with programming languages, guys. The more programming that you do, the easier it will be for you to get uh, to adopt the next thing. So that's why you can keep up. You don't uh, at this point, guys. It's that it's a you, you oh, at least in my career, you get to a point where like l reading a newsletter is enough for you to know if you're getting outdated or if you know enough to basically be able to swing whatever you want uh, in, in the industry. So, what I want you to take away from this is that the way you keep on learning fast enough is that you get faster. The hardest part of learning in software development is usually in the beginning when you don't really know everything and when you haven't gotten to that point where you know enough of the ecosystems and how everything works within uh, all the tools that you need to be effective as a software developer. That takes a while. Once you get there, it usually takes a few years to get good at all the surrounding things, not just your programming language, but your web server, CLIs, cloud solutions, uh, security, I can, you can, I can go on, right? All these different things. But once you have those things, then you will be a lot faster at learning the next thing. And if you learn a few more versions of, say, a database, like if you know, if you know a few databases, then everything basically becomes old hat, like you you can basically know how the syntax is going to work before you even start working with the thing. And if you don't understand fully, it takes you f a few seconds to look it up and then you can be productive because you have so much experience with things that are similar that you're basically, y you might not be able to know it at the top of your head, but the time it takes you to learn it is so, so small that for all intents and purposes, you do know it. That's how I, it usually works. Have a great day.